This is our very first uh, 11 a.m. service, and it's nice to see you guys. The reason why we're doing this is for us to be able to invite more no, of our brothers and sisters, especially those who have not heard of who Jesus is. So, as we get into our series entitled Faith Like No Other, this is our second installment. Pastor Dave preached a powerful word last week on what a faith like no other is through the story of Noah. And today, we're going to go through another story from the Bible, but I wanted to figure out what does it mean to have a faith like no other. Ano ba ibig sabihin no? no? Faith like no other. And so, just like you, the first thing that I did was to Google it. <laughs> so I Googled it. No? What does it mean when you say like no other? And I like that it actually just means a different kind. No? It's above the rest, it's greater, and it's actually a special kind one. No? And this is my desire for all of us, that we will have this kind of faith, a faith like no other, not only this year, but in the years to come as we follow Christ. No? And I believe that is, if there's one word no, that describes a faith like no other, it's bigger. Say that with me, bigger. How many of you want to be bigger? In faith. Yeah, no, we want to be bigger in faith. Let me start with a story first before we get into the word. I'd like you to interact with me as I tell you this story about two people. Okay? There's a king, and of course, his son is the prince. This king had a kingdom where he had 3,000 soldiers. He assigned 1,000 to his son. And so total soldiers that this kingdom had were, how many? <laughs> 3,000 plus 1,000 is? So the kingdom of this king had 4,000 soldiers. So his son with the 1,000 soldiers try to advance the kingdom, no? And they try to defeat this area where they can advance and conquer more nations. They win, but this is what happens. Their enemy was so furious they wanted to retaliate. And dahil napikun po yung enemy, guess how much army he, he mustered and collected? Two, Higante. English known? Revengation, to revenge the loss that has happened. This is how much the enemy kingdom had. They had 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and troops like the sands in the seashore. Madami ba yon? Dami nun. 3,000 against so much. Imagine, no, sabi nung kalaban. How many of you know that it's already a lost war for the first kingdom? How many of you will agree? Wala na, talo na to. Raise your hand. How many of you will say, De, may laban pa yun, yung tatlong libo. Meron pa yun, meron pa yun, meron pa. Apat na libo, meron pa ba? How many of you will say? How many of you will never raise their hands To be honest, I said, wala na to. Reality. If I were the kingdom that was conquering, I would say this, sorry, nagkamali, hindi talaga kayo yung kalaban namin. Kampi talaga tayo. Eh. It's a huge obstacle to challenge. No? But what if I tell you that this kingdom who only had 4,000 against so much, had God on their side. Would that change the story? Yes. And that's why we're going to go through this story. And this story is found in the book of Samuel. This story is about a king and a prince. And that king's name is Saul. And his son's name is Jonathan. And this is what and where we will camp in today. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 1 says, As you know the backdrop already of this situation where the enemy wants to attack them, where the enemy wants to crush them for what they have done, what happens? They hid themselves. They 
were so scared that the army of 4,000 became 600. And now we come into this story. Verse 1. One day, Jonathan, the son of Saul, the prince in our story, said to the young man who carried his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistine garrison on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Saul, the king, was staying in the outskirts of Gibeah in the pomegranate cave at Migron. The people who were with him were about 600 men. Jump to verse 6. Jonathan said to the young man who carried his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. Lord, this is not only your word, but your story for us today. Lord, let this word that we will go through in this chapter of 1 Samuel 14, Allow it, Lord God, to see not only the story, but also our lives, Lord God, and where we need to build our faith. Lord, thank you that you are the one who will build our faith today. Allow us to be encouraged. Allow us to move in action and allow us to trust you more. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are going through challenging times today. They may be distracted by the worries of tomorrow, concerns of health, career, business, Lord, silence, the worries, the anxiety, and be the loudest voice in their lives today. Let your word minister to each and every one of us, including me, Lord. Bless the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. And so as this is happening, this Jonathan, the prince, goes to a different place and tells his armor bearer, come, let's go to enemy territory. How many of you know that this is a crazy thing to do? Imagine, no? The enemy were getting ready, sabi nila, oh, 8 a.m., attack na natin yung nag-defeat nung isa nating place. We're gonna defeat them. Guess what? Saul was hiding. And there was a reason why they were waiting and hiding. He actually did something that did not please the Lord. And so he disobeyed God. And so he felt like the battle has already been lost. How many of you know that means, no, pag nagkamali tayo, feeling natin, hala, ba hindi na sagutin ni Lord yung mga prayer natin? Meron pang ganun feeling sa inyo? A lot of us, or most of us, feel that way. And so Saul was in a place that he was hiding, no? He was hiding with a 600 frightened army. But Jonathan had this idea who was only with one person. And this was his idea. Verse 6, Come, let us go over to the enemy territory, the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing can hinder from saving by many or by few. And I like that perspective that he knew that God was the same regardless of the number of enemies that they had. And sometimes, we feel like in our world today, meron bang times na pag sobrang laki ng problema, feeling mo hindi na kaya ni Lord? Ano tayo, no? Minsan, no? Our transaction and our relationship with God is based on the gravity of our challenges. Sino sa atin, na pag malit ang problema, hindi na tayo pumunta kay Lord? Meron ba? Ay, ako na to. Ano lang to, eh? Debt of 5 billion. Ako na to. But when it gets bigger and when it gets out of control, how many of you hit that panic button and say, I need God in my life? I mean, let me encourage you, regardless of how big or how small, God is on your side. He will always be with you. And this was the declaration of Jonathan. Regardless of by many or by few, kung gaano man karami ang kalaban natin or konti, he knew that his God was on his side. And let me start this preaching by this first point. Faith, like no other, is seeing that God is for us in challenging times. I want to focus on that word, seeing. Do we actually see that God is on your side? Uh, I was telling the 9 a.m. service a while ago that when I turned 40, how many of you experienced that? No, yung 
overnight nung pag 40 years old ka pag dilat ng mata mo malabo no no by age no and, and i i know yes i look 20 that's 20 days to 50 no no and, and i and at when i reached the age 40 i had to use uh, glasses ito po ang una kong issue sabi nung doctor ano may issue ka sa distance malayo sabi niya noon um uh, nahirapan ka ba magbasa Kasi ako yun nga problema, hindi po ako nagbabasa. So, so may issue ako sa distance. So, before, I used to preach at the 5 and 7. I could read my notes, but I could not see the people. So, I needed glasses for distance. Alam nyo, just after a year, I could see the people at the back, but I couldn't read my notes anymore. Grabe, no? Ano po tawag doon? Kailangan ko daw ng... Uh, Progressive, progressive, no? In the olden times, in the biblical times, doble vista. <laughs> diba kaya gumaganon yung, no? Yung doble vista, yung may aquarium dito. And so now, my glasses are both for distance and for reading. I remember my doctor would always tell me, you need to change the way you see things. Ay, ano po ibig sabihin nun? When you read, it's not your head that will go down. It's just your eyes. Kasi nandito yung ibang lens. So it was hard for me to read. The <laughs> 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 Parang it was so difficult. So minsan naglalakad ako, babasa ako text. So it was so difficult for me. I'm saying this story because it's difficult to adjust when there's a new vision, when there's a new perspective. And I'm saying this because as people of God, we have a clear vision of the enemy, of the challenges, but we rarely see God in our lives. Hindi natin lagi nakikita na as we see the enemy, he is always here with us. We need the vision to see that God is present. A lot of times, no, mabalis tayo maratel. And this is the reality of a Christian life. Wala pong prinami si Lord na pag ka, blessed lagi ang buhay mo. How many of you know that that is not true? Na, sabi ni Jesus, si even Jesus said, no, there will be troubles. And the troubles that we have is a reality, but the reality that we also have is in our troubles, God is on our side. Tap the person to your right, tell that person, God is on your side. He will always be with you. And that's why this was the declaration of this guy, Jonathan. Sabi niya doon sa armor bearer niya. Punta tayo doon. Imagine, no, these two people against thousands and hundreds of thousands of enemies. And he was willing to go and say, I'm willing to do this because I know who is on my side. We need to have a reality of who God is. That He is the most powerful God of all. And that's why as we were singing this song, ano sinasabi natin? All things are possible. All things are possible. But you have to understand the next part of the song. In His name. In the most powerful name. In the one that we pray to. And this I did not preach in the morning. And I want to say this, no? This is for the 11 o'clock only. <laughs> Dinagdag ko to para sa 11 o'clock. And I believe this is a timely message. God alone is enough in your battles. No matter how many, how big, how grand your battles are, we have a bigger God than their challenges. Amen? And so as we continue, imagine that, no? One of the things that I want to emphasize with this first point that we need to see God is that Jonathan's actions, and we will learn that later, that his action to go to the enemy with two people only was not a reckless move. It was not a crazy move. For us, who are listening to the story, we will say, loko loko tong Jonathan na to. Di ba niya alam sobrang dami you have to know that Jonathan was a military man. He could calculate the wars. That's why he won the first one. But his posture never changed with the number of enemies that he had. I want you to know this. Jonathan's backup in knowing God 
is because he knew God was faithful. Let me tell you how Jonathan thought. No? Ito yung tinatry kong isipin the other day. Ano kayang nasa isip ni Jonathan to go and attack with two, with dalawa lang sila versus thousands? He was not, af- he did not have his, uh, let me back that. Hindi, in Tagalog, version 2. Hindi niya dinala yung yabang niya dahil nakatalo siya before. Alam niyo kung anong dala niya? Lahat ng victory na ginawa ni Lord para sa tao niya. He knew that the God that he was serving to advance the kingdom of Israel was the God who would part the Red Sea. He knew of all the stories of the faithfulness of God and that's why his confidence was in the Lord. Hindi sa kanya in how he was that good of a military man. And so the operative word is, he knew God. Do we know God that way? That he is a faithful God. Verse 7, And his armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Do as you wish. Behold, I am with you, heart and soul. And this is a side preaching, that my prayer is that we have people in our lives that are willing to say, I will go with you through this challenge. Meron ka bang mga kaibigan na are willing to pray with you, fight with you, and be with you in challenging times. And so this was the brilliant plan of this Jonathan, the prince. Verse 8, and Jonathan said, Behold, we will cross over to the men, yun sa kalaban, and we will show ourselves to them. Imagine, no? The most probable is gumapang sila doon, tapos pagdating nila doon sa enemy territory, sinugi nila habang natutulo. Dapat, ano, uh, ano tawag dito? Stealth mode. Yun ba yung version? Stealth mode, hindi nakikita. Like today, meron tayong mga ushers na gumagapang dyan, pinagpipray kayo sa ilalim ng chair. Naka-stealth mode. Pa, ganun yan. Tapos, Lord. Uh, ano tawag nila doon, Pastor Dave? Yung the element of surprise. No? Dapat ganun. But the game plan was, let's show ourselves. <laughs> Ito yung game plan nila. Behold, we will cross over to the men and we will show ourselves to them. If they say to us, and there were two only options, wait until we come to you, then we will stand here in our place. And we will go, we will not go up to them. Isa lang ang plano po nila, magpakita. The alternative of the response is, if they say, come to us, then we will go up. For the Lord has given them into our hands, and this shall be a sign to us. Two options, one outcome. If they say we will go, then the Lord will give them into our hands. Imagine, no? try to picture the battle. It's two against thousands. Ang sinasabi nitong si Jonathan, alam niyo yung nakikita niyo, di ba, sa um, mga TikTok, and uh, may friends there pa ba? Wala na, di ba yung sabi nila, pag tumingin ka, akin ka. Nakita niyo na yun? Pag tumingin to, akin. Parang ganun, pag sinabi, if they say, kuha na natin to. So what happens? Verse 11. So both of them showed up. They showed themselves to this enemy line. They showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, look. Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden themselves. They knew, the enemy knew that they were so afraid. Verse 12, sabi na, ah, baka mag na to, retreat. Huh? Maybe they would surrender. Verse 12, and the men of the garrison hailed Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, come up to us and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come up after me for the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Verse 13, Then Jonathan climbed up in his hand and feet and his armor bearer after him. They fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer killed them after him. Verse 14, And the first strike which Jonathan and his armor bearer made killed about 20 men within as if were half a first length in an acre of land. So what happened was they said, Pakita po sila. Sabi ng mga, patay dito, may papakita ko sa inyo, papatayin namin kayo ng gilet, ng para mahirap, ganun. So when they show themselves, as soon as they went, a few people, ano pong nangyari? 
they defeated instantly 20. 20 people with... As in, ganon. 20 na ganon. 1, 2, 3, patay, 20. How many of you know that the 20 is not even a dent with the number of people that they were against? There were more people that the battle was way from over. The battle was not even won. But I'd like you to first know that Jonathan and the armor bearer did the first move. I want you to note that. He did the first move. Verse 15, and there was a panic in the camp, in the field, and among all the people, the garrison and even the raiders trembled. The earth quaked, and it became a great panic right after killing those 20. Nagkaroon po ng earthquake. Earthquake with me. And then there was a great panic. What was the effect of the panic? This was the result. Then Saul and all the people who were with him railed and went into battle. And behold, every Philistine sword was against his fellow, and there was very great confusion. This is how the Lord moved in this story. As soon as Jonathan strikes the first 20, earthquake, there was a great confusion. Imagine, no? Coincidence ba yun? Coincidence, tingin nyo ba, coincidence yun? Yung, dalawa lang naman yung perspective dito. Yung isa, sabi si Lord yun. Yung isa, yung medyo nega, ay hindi, nagkataon lang. <laughs> so we know in this story that it is the Lord who moved and there was a great panic. Imagine, no, kung nari kami ni Pastor Joash, Philistines kami, nag attack kami. After ng earthquake, ah, kalaban na kita, saksakin kita ng pagmamahal or something. There was a great panic that the enemy defeated each other. How many of you know that that is only possible through God's work? First move, 20, and then God did the rest. Let's look at the version of Saul's perspective. While Saul was waiting, frightened, Nandito po si Saul, 600, nagtatago sa kweba, waiting, frightened that the enemy were going to advance and kill them. Imagine the fear. And then they hear, nagkakagulo yung mga, ah, papanik. And then they see people fighting each other from zero faith. What happens? Sabi nila, they also join the fight and pursue to build up faith. Saul did the second move. Ano po ibig sabihin nun? He had to see first God move and then he moved. Why is this important? Because in both perspectives, this is what God is teaching Jonathan and Saul. One who had so much faith and one who had a dwindling faith. This is the lesson that they learned. Regardless if God first moves or we first move, this is what is sure. God will definitely show up in our battles. And I like that because we cannot box God in the way where He will show up and the time that He will show up. Dito po naka-minister sa akin yung word. Kasi feeling ko marami na rin akong formula in my mind that this is the way that God will answer me because this is how He answered me before. Minsan iniisip natin, no? Ah, pag may problema ako, ang ginagawa ko kasi, nagpe-pray ako kay Lord. After ko mag-pray kay Lord, magpa-pray ako sa VG ko. And after ko magpa-pray sa VG ko, sumasagot na si Lord. Eh, what if iba yung gawin ni Lord this time? Will we say that it is not God anymore? One of the things that people of God need to know and embrace is this truth that we all need to know that God will show up but the how and the timing is not up to us. It will always be up to God. Nag-iiba po yung ways ni Lord because if, if God's ways were only one kind of way, He is not a God. 
Ibig sabihin nun, parang genie na lang siya that whenever we want him to show up, he will. But you have to understand in the sovereignty of God, the timing will always be perfect and the way will always be perfect. And I had to repent and say, Lord, bakit ganun yung mga prayers ko? Bakit ang mga prayers ko sa'yo may request tapos tinasabi ko din sa'yo kung paano tsaka kailan? Lord, sagutin mo naman tong prayer ko, dapat bukas ha? Kasi dapat ito yung way. You know, a built-up faith or a faith like no other is not only seeing that God is on your side, but is also knowing that He will show up when in His way and in His time. Amen? This is the second point. Faith like no other is knowing God shows up in His way and His timing. This is very important. A theology that we need to accept. It's not our ways. It's not our timing. Sometimes there are delays. Sometimes it's too fast. Sometimes it's even instant that we even miss out on God. But one thing is for sure. Tap the person there. So say, this is for sure. God is faithful. He will show up. No matter how big your enemy is, God is faithful. He will show up. Amen? Amen. So first, we talked about faith like no other is seeing God. Kailangan nakikita natin si Lord. Nandyan. Second, we talked about faith is knowing that God will show up. There's that faith they go. Imagine, no, Jonathan going there. He didn't know when God would show up. Pwedeng after the 20, pwedeng hindi pa, pwedeng the next day. But he had this confidence that God would never abandon him. He would always show up. The way that God showed up was also different. Nagpa-earthquake si Lord, kinonfuse ni Lord. And I like that kasi faith, and I, and I remember what James said, no? and I, I'll just add this in our preaching. Faith without works is? This is actually a picture of that. Jonathan had to do something and say, faith sometimes, no, feeling natin, ano lang, the I believe. But there's also that act of obedience in saying, because I believe, this is what I will do. We cannot sometimes just wait for the Lord. Let me give you a story. Um, going, sinabi ko na ba? Nalilito na ako, no? But there was a season in our lives, me and my wife, we were OFWs. Nakatira po kami sa isang lugar na napakalayo, ibang time zone, ibang panahon. And so, merong season na, sabi namin, time's up na kami sa Cebu. So, nung time, so sabi ni, merong year, sabi ni Pam, I think uwi na tayo. Tapos sabi ko, hindi, sabi, parang dito pa eh, walang word si Lord. Tapos the next year, ako naman, parang uwi na tayo. And then si Pam would say, hindi, parang ano, parang wala pa namang words. So there was a season in our life, and this was a long period, that we really didn't know if it was time to go back or time to stay. And our formula as people of God were, uh, kailangan, Clear sa amin si Lord, may word, or na-encourage kami by one of the leaders who have been, been praying for us, you know, that before we go back, that was our own way of seeing God. Ganito mag-move si Lord sa atin, so dapat ganito mangyari. Step one, step two, step two. Ano po kami, no? hindi kami mag-agree, iba yung timing namin. And then one day, we were talking to one of our pastors from Manila, Bishop Jure, of our bishops. And I was telling him, no, paano ba namin malalaman? Tagal namin yung I'll never forget what he said. Sabi niya, as husband and wife, the most important thing is that you are united. And when you are united, sometimes God will meet you in your unity. As long as you are united because you are one, when you take that step of faith, God will meet you in your faith. Not only did God speak to us in that conversation, God revealed to us that He's a God that we cannot box. God moves in different ways in different seasons of our lives. Sometimes faster, sometimes longer. He's teaching us something. But this is what I'm sure of. God will show up. That is definitely the reality. He will show up. Amen? And so what happens? This is the effect. Verse 21. 
Now the Hebrews who had been with them, the Philistines before that time who had gone up with them into the camp, even they also turned to be with the Israelites who were with Saul and Jonathan. Yung mga taong takot na takot na ayaw lumaban dahil nakita nila na naggumalaw na si Lord had their faith built up and said, let's go, let's attack the enemy. Nakakatawa, no? They attack the enemy kasi the enemy naman were killing each other. Na-picture niyo ba yun? So, yung dalawang Philistines, ha! Tapos sila nandun, ha, nag-aaway siya. Chika! Wala naman talaga silang, gets you yun? Wala naman talaga silang kailangan gawin. But because of what God has done, their faith was also built up to join the battle. And this is the way God moves. He wants us to be part of what He's doing, but at the same time, we know that He's the one doing the heavy lifting. No? Ganun naman ka-gracious si God. Di ba yung mga, pagka, mga parents, no, yung may kids, yung kunwari sila magbubuhat yung anak, tas ikaw naman talaga. Tintulungan. God wants us to join in what He's doing. And so the desire to have faith like no other in this story is knowing that when God moves, it encourages the rest of the people. I want to say this. When we say faith like no other, it actually means a faith that is beyond us. It affects others. How many of you want that kind of faith? In this story, Jonathan Jonathan's faith was so contagious that the nation went behind him and fought with him. Ito ang prayer ko. That a bigger faith for you is a faith that will affect your families. Basi nyo ba yun? Yung faith nyo, kayo yung tao sa bahay na pagka may problema yung... And, and this might sound weird, pero pag may problema, ikaw yung tatakbuhan. Basi nyo, yung barang may problema ako... Most of the time, but problema ka na naman. And ako, merong times no, I get to be so negative yung merong may lalapit. D- dati pa to, no, mga last week. <laughs> lalapit. When we hear that, no, sometimes even as people of God, tayo ang source ng discouragement. May sipon daw siya. Nako, cancer yan. <laughs> Ay, sobrang negalan talaga, no? Yung... As people of God, I hope you know that our lives are meant to be an encouragement to others. And the only way to do that is not just forwarding verses, not just praying for them, but for them to see that you have a big God. Sobrang laki ng Diyos natin that when they see it in our lives, may encourage sila, ano bang meron ka? Bakit parang kahit may problema ka, okay ka? Ano bang nakikita mo na hindi ko nakikita? That's where we share to them. Kasi nakadoble bista na ako. I see God in my situation. I see God in this challenge. And I know that my God is faithful. We need people who have this kind of faith. You want to know why? Paglabas po natin sa pinto na to, the world we live in is so filled with too much practicality. Too much, even negativity. We bring this message to the people out there. We are the one, and, and I hope you get this by now that every preaching was never to be just for you. It's always for the benefit of others. So imagine with me that your family are encouraged because of a different kind of faith in your life. Amen? It desire you yun. Because the grace of God is with you and you desire. Lord, I want, how many of you want that? Lord, I want a bigger faith this year. 24 lang. Lord, gusto ko na malaki yung faith. Kasi ito reality that I started with. We will all have trials. And I want you to have a big faith so that when you go through trial, this is your first response. I need prayer, but I know my God will save me. We need a big picture of a big God. Amen? Last verse in this story, it says, So the Lord saved Israel 
that day. I like that because as you know, if you go through this chapter and the succeeding books, you will see David coming in the picture. You will see David slaying the giant. You will see uh, more of the 12, uh, the kingdoms, the, the different kings. You will see so many things, the prophets. And I hope you know, until it comes to the coming of Christ, Jesus, the Lord will always save his people. Hindi natatapos ang pagsubok, but at the same time, he continually saves them. Thank you, Lord, that you will continually save us. As people of God who declare that he is our Lord and Savior, his salvation was not just that one day. It's for every day. God is willing to save you. Hindi po nauubusan ng salvation. Si, si Pastor Dave, pang 20 na to, ha? 21 lang ang limit. No? God will want to always have you in His place. Amen? Nothing is impossible with God. And so this is my third point. Faith, like no other, is not only seeing and knowing, but fully trusting God to save us in challenging times. And I want you to really think about this no, deeply. Because sometimes... We know that God is present. Sometimes we see that He is with us, but we don't trust Him enough. Meron pong times, no? Pe-pray tayo, Lord, kau na bahala ah. But yun totoo, ginagawa din natin ng paraan. Lord, kau na bahala dito sa problema ko ah. Kasi, ano, laki na nito yung sa problema ko sa negosyo. Pero dahil hindi ka pa sumasagot, ayusin ko muna dito sa ilalim ng lamesa. Lord, ikaw na ang sumalba ng marriage ko, ah. pero unless nagbabago na yung puso nung spouse ko, dito muna ako kasi dito, mahal naman ako nito. Do we fully trust God that He will show up? That His time will always be perfect? That His ways will always be higher than our ways? It's not just seeing, it's not just knowing, it's fully trusting God. And I like the word, no, the definition of faith. Yung, for me, the easiest definition of faith is two words, eh, fully trust. And it's not just trust. Because we can have trust in so many things. When we say fully trusting, it's only to one. And that is to God. Do we fully trust God? Fully trust Him that he will show up, that he's for us. Amen? Let me tell you a last story before we try to end. This is my desire as your pastor, that not only this year, 2024, but the rest of the, your year as followers of Jesus, that it will just get bigger and bigger. Your faith will grow bigger and bigger. How many of you want that? As the year goes by, you are getting stronger and stronger and stronger in your faith. Amen? Bigger faith. Let me tell you a story as I try to land this. This is a story that is found in the series of C.S. Lewis, Narnia. How many of you are familiar with that? Um, and so in the movie, if you watch the movie of uh, Prince Caspian, the installment of Prince Caspian, most of the movies are about battle between good and evil. So give you a context. And Aslan, the big lion, is also a representation. Si C.S. Lewis po, I hope you know by now, he's a, a Christian no, author. And Aslan, the lion, is actually a representation of who God is. The Savior. Kaya if you go through the book now, if you didn't know that, may kita mo, no? Nung sinacrifice si Aslan, nabuhay siya ulit. Galing, no? And he would always show up in times of battles. There were battles that he wouldn't show up yet. And in this depiction, in where they were waiting no, to win another battle, Lucy was been, has been waiting for Aslan. And I like this part. Aslan said to Lucy, you're bigger. Sabi niya kay Lucy. That is because you are older, little one, answered he. Not because you are. And this is what he said. I am not. But every year you grow, you will find me bigger. What does that mean? The more 
that we grow in our faith, the more that we have a bigger God. And the more that we read the word of God, the more that we learn in fellowship with others, the more that we attend uh, a worship service, the more that we, I like what Pastor George said a while ago, no? when the rubber beats the road, the more that nate test yung faith natin, my prayer as your pastor is we will see God bigger. A bigger God. Because when our God is bigger, our challenges get smaller. When we see God bigger, the challenges dissolve. We need a bigger God in our lives. And this is the reality. God wants to be bigger in your life this year. And that is possible if we desire this kind of faith, no? to know him, to see him. And most especially for me, I think this message, this preaching for me personally is to trust God more. Amen? So let me try to summarize it with one statement. Faith, like no other or a bigger faith, is fully seeing or fully see, know, and trust that God will save us in challenging times. Can I ask everyone to stand and we're going to pray? Lord, thank you that you are a bigger God. Not only because of the preaching, because Holy Spirit, you have revealed this to them, that you desire for them to see you as one who is all-powerful, as one where nothing is impossible, and as one who is always for us, never leaving us nor forsaking us. Lord, thank you that if there is one application of this message, it's to fully trust you more. I remember an encounter with Christ of one person about healing, I believe of a son. And ito yung prayer niya. Sabi niya, gusto ko maliwala, Lord. Pero meron akong unbelief. The word that was used was unbelief. Gusto natin. Maniwala. Kilala natin si Lord ng Bible. Tagal na natin siyang naririnig. But there's a question of belief. And I like that prayer of that dad. And this is what he said. Lord, help me with my unbelief. And so if that is you, maybe this is a season of waiting and you're saying, Lord, maniniwala pa ba ako sa'yo? And you want to believe him, but it seems like the challenge is the 30,000 uh, chariots and the 6,000 horsemen in your situation, it seems like parang lumalapit na sila, yung kalaban palapit na, wala ka na magawa, and your faith in God to show up is dwindling. Just like that person who prayed, Lord, help me in my unbelief. If that's you, I'd like to pray for you for more faith. So if that's you, just raise your hand. Yes, Lord. You see these hands? Yes. Thank you, Lord. No, The first acknowledgement that we need you is the posture of surrender. And so, Lord, I see these, all, all my brothers and sisters raising their hands. Thank you, Lord, no, that this is boldness to say, Lord, help me in my unbelief. And so, Lord, I pray for each and everyone who are raising their hands. I want to pray a powerful prayer. Lord, allow them to experience a Jonathan-like experience. Show up. Show up in their lives. Lord, magpakita ka. Show up in their situation. And Lord, not only that, show off. Pakita mo na ikaw lang. That nothing is impossible with you. Lord, as they raise their hands, this is also a sign of asking you to bring them with you, pulling them out of this challenge. Lord, not only will you show up, Lord, you will make yourself felt in their lives. Lord, be the one who will do the work. Lord, do the heavy lifting. Do the earthquake. Confuse the enemies in their lives. Because we want to declare the last verse in our story today, verse 23, Today, the Lord saves. Today, the Lord saves.
Lord, help us in our unbelief. Replace it with so much of faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's give a God the hand of applause. And before we end, I know this is a different schedule. It's, it's now a little bit lunch, but I don't want us to leave without responding in worship. Let's just sing this song once again and just allow God to speak to us in this song that nothing is impossible with him. Amen?